Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, Fractal Bitcoin. Welcome, I'm Chris. This is your daily Bitcoin news video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow the channel. Let's get to our quick price update. Right now we're at 51832 and we've been hanging around between 51 and 53,000 for a few days now. So this is we're just hanging here. We're sort of consolidating. It's all good. We're definitely going to keep going up over the next 18 months, right, to our a new all-time high. So let's move on to some news. What do you think about all those other cryptocurrencies? Yeah, this is an interesting video. It really, this guy right here, he really explains how Bitcoin is different from all the other cryptos. So let's listen to this. Awesome. We'll get I have you a on. question for you guys, actually. What do you think? You've asked me a few questions. What do you think about all the other uh, cryptos out there? Ooh. And them talking about, you know, these not being such a big player. Do you want to take that one? Sure. I think they're just a, you know, new version of fiat currency. They don't solve the problem Bitcoin is trying to solve. Bitcoin is about getting us off of the fiat standard funds of sound money, right? 21 million and that's it. Every other crypto is not trying to do that. Every other crypto is just trying to make you more fiat. So if that's your goal, every other crypto is enticing. But if your goal is, no, we need a, rebel, a monetary revolution in the world, then you got to stick to Bitcoin because it's the only one that, that has that problem. The only one, really. Ethereum and all those others. No, they're too, they're too centralized, the right? Like you, like you know who the founder of Ethereum is. What he says goes. He can change the protocol. He has influence over the monetary system of Ethereum. So it's just another form of fiat currency. Whereas Bitcoin doesn't have that. There's no headquarters. There's no CEO. It's, it's fully decentralized. It's essentially run by, is that what's called a blockchain? Yeah, by the network itself. So if you run your own full node, you are contributing to the Bitcoin ecosystem. If you're a miner, you're contributing to the Bitcoin ecosystem. If you're a user, if you're a merchant that accepts it, right? So the network itself runs, like, and the technology enables that. So it runs it itself. It's like, we didn't have that in corporations in the past because we didn't have the technology for it. Now we have the opportunity to actually have a fully decentralized monetary system. It's crazy. We, can't, we can't, still can't fully wrap our heads around what's happening. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, come on, right? What a great explanation of why Bitcoin is different from all other cryptos and why it's better money than we've ever been able to have on planet Earth is just great. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Let's move on. Bitcoin mining is not a waste of energy. Yeah, this is a this is something normies say or people who don't know about Bitcoin. They always say, oh, it's a terrible waste of energy. Oh, and also governments say this and regulators and all the corrupt people, right? The corrupt cartel that we call a government. This is one of their, you know, one of their criticisms of Bitcoin. But mining is not a waste of energy. It obsoletes the real wasters of energy, which is the corrupt governments and the military industrial complex. Yeah. And Guy Swan, uh, put out this video here. I'll link to it. As always, I link to everything in the show notes. And Guy Swan says, the corrupt political debt bloated system that is the source of the Bitcoin mining propaganda is the waste of energy that Bitcoin is fixing. So think of it that way. Think of all the corruption, all the nonsense going on in the world, all the wasted energy. Bitcoin is actually better because it's going to use less energy than all that, like once Bitcoin is adopted more fully. So it's, and you have to do a little research to figure out the details and sort of convince yourself in your own mind. I mean, don't, don't listen to me, go, you know, look into it further for sure. But this is definitely true. And the other question they ask with regard to power is what happens to Bitcoin if all the electricity gets shut off everywhere, you know? And what if, it's, what if it gets shut off for 10 years? Well, look, this is an amazing message here from Michael Saylor. Let's listen. Bitcoin is a nuclear-hardened protocol. It's, it's pretty much the most robust, resilient thing the human race has yet to invent. For example, it's running uh, on, on tens of thousands of nodes. You can't even identify the nodes. And there's an identical copy of the Bitcoin ledger on every one of them. So if all of the electricity got shut off everywhere on Earth, and every computer failed everywhere on Earth for 10 years, the protocol just goes dormant for 10 years. And as soon as one person turns one node back on, the entire protocol comes back to life again. 
There's nothing like that, right? Uh, all your money in a bank and Bank of America could be wiped out with, you know, a keystroke. You go and you wipe out a few servers, you know? Your building can be wiped out with a bomb, right? Lots of things can be wiped out, but, but um, Bitcoin is the most resilient thing in cyberspace because it is so incredibly decentralized. You know, if you took if you took an entire country offline, that's irrelevant. In fact, we just saw last year during the China crackdown that China banned Bitcoin mining. They took 40 to 50 percent of the entire network offline. Half of Bitcoin mining was taking place in China. The network didn't miss a beat, not even for a minute. It just kept running completely secure. Point is, yeah. I mean, come on. And this is this is another criticism from people who don't understand Bitcoin at all. Oh, what if the power goes out? Yeah, well, what about your bank? What if the what if your bank's power goes down? Your bank is can't do anything either. So, it's a weird people search for like criticisms of Bitcoin. They don't think it through. They're just like it's like knee-jerk reactions. It's like with anarchism when you say, "Oh, government is illegitimate and immoral." And people say, oh, but without government, who's going to build the roads, right? The roads is the first question they always ask, which is stupid. We build the roads. Government doesn't build roads. People build roads. And we can build our own roads. We already build our own roads. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. Bitcoin breaks new all-time highs in multiple countries. And coming soon to the U.S. dollar. Yeah, we're going to break our record. Checked out this... Uh, it's almost like a little slideshow. These are all the countries here on the top right you can see. And you can see the chart and Bitcoin's at all-time highs. Now, how is it at all-time highs in these countries, but not in the U.S. dollar? Well, because these countries are suffering from worse inflation than the U.S. dollar. So, we, you know, especially in the U.S., we always look at Bitcoin in terms of the U.S. dollar. But we forget that other countries, Bitcoin is is against their own currency, right? It They... they they evaluate it compared to their own currency and bitcoin is look look at look at these charts this is insane it's beautiful now here is something that happened today or yesterday um or 12 hours ago the european central bank came out with this dumb article and they this is their tweet bitcoin has failed to become a global decentralized digital currency instead falling victim to fraud and manipulation the recent approval of an ETF doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is costly, slow, and inconvenient. That's what they argue. And this is so dumb. In fact, if we go to the next uh, tweet here from Scott Wolf, he literally breaks down in a thread. A bun- he, he, he debunks every single thing they say in their stupid tweet because it's absolutely wrong. It's literally wrong. So I'm going to link to this. You can read why it's exactly wrong, but their their tweet or their post got community noted, and it's pretty epic. Bitcoin is not only eating the financial value of the world, it's also sucking in the highest value human capital. The ECB knows this, which is why they're going to such lengths to discredit this supposedly failed technology. Bullish. Yeah, we're bullish. Look at the community notes here. The readers added context Okay, so the community notes got changed or something, but people were adding the facts and debunking every single thing here. So, and this is two articles in the same day. Look at these two articles side by side. This is really sus, as uh, Don't Believe the Hype says. We have the post that we just talked about, that we just read from the European Central Bank, and then this uh, on the right, European Central Bank posts first annual loss in two decades. Yeah, they're suffering. They're being outclassed by Bitcoin. They're being made irrelevant by Bitcoin. And they're flailing and fighting, trying to survive. But Bitcoin is the superior asset. And it's going to just eat all these banks. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I love watching them flail and whine. It's really cool. And Tanel, who's in Europe, I believe, says Europe really is going to zero. Yeah, it, it really is. Europe is insane, man. Like, just insane. But look at what Nigeria is doing. They're blocking access for its 213 million citizens. 
They're blocking access to Kraken, Binance, and Coinbase exchanges in an effort to curb the currency slide of the Naira. Yeah, so their currency is suffering, and now they're not letting their people use crypto or sell their crypto. Cheating the people is the only way governments can make fiat win. So this is what governments do. Imagine wherever you are. Let's say you're in the U.S. Imagine the U.S. government said you're, you're, you can't use any other currency besides the U.S. dollar and we're blocking everything else. That's ridiculous. Why not let the people transact how they want to transact? Because fiat's a scam and that's the only way they can do it is by brute force. And people are waking up. This isn't going to last forever. This is fiat is in its death throes it's dying it's flailing and we're watching it flail so you know another thing that happened today was uh americans reporting nationwide cellular outages from at&t cricket wireless and other providers i don't know how widespread this was i mean it's just happening today so we're going to get more details as time goes on but here's a here's a screenshot that says <laughs> no indication of of a cyber attack, federal agency says. And then, of course, uh, Base here says, well, I guess that means it was a cyber attack because pretty much whatever the mainstream media is going to say, whatever the federal agency says is usually not the truth, right? They're hiding something. They're spinning it. It's, it, you know, you can't trust it. And here's uh, Kajuzi says, say it with me, the cyber pandemic Right. This is going to be the next, you know, remember four years ago, it was the the covid pandemic on the election year. And that made everything crazy. A lot of people think that uh, this year they're going to either do an Internet outage or something right before the election. And then they're going to cancel the election and declare martial law. And things are going to get crazy because they don't want a certain person to become president. This year might get nutty it might really get nutty. Uh, here's an article. Terraform Labs founder Do Kwan uh, to be extradited to the U.S. from Montenegro. So yeah, this is Do Kwan here. He, uh, he's facing fraud charges related to the collapse of the UST stablecoin. He was uh, from Terra. Terra was the coin. I guess Terraform Labs is the company but look this I, I'm only bringing this up because this is a good example of an s coin scam just like uh, in the previous clip we heard that even ethereum you know is run by Vitalik Buterin and if he wants to make changes he snaps his fingers and makes changes well same thing Do Kwan was in charge of uh, Terra Luna and they did all kinds of shady stuff so this is what happens with S coins. Bitcoin's different. Okay. That's the only reason I brought this up. Uh, here's a cool video. Uh, Bitcoin node comparison. Umbral, Start9, MyNode, and more. So this guy is Ian Major, all things Bitcoin. I'll link to the video. Yeah, these are, you know, home servers. You can have your own sovereign server in your home that it's yours and nobody can touch it. Not even anybody. So, and I, I actually have one. I have a start nine. So, um, and along the same lines as hardware, I found this uh, d-central.com website. I think they're based in Canada, but they're pioneering the Bitcoin mining revolution with expertise and innovation. They got mining equipment, hosting and infrastructure, mining assistance. Now I looked, I was looking into this because I want to get a small miner for home, if I can, I'm just, I just started researching. Um, but they have a lot of uh, stuff on their site. They have a lot of miners for sale, a lot of things. So uh, anyway, I'll just leave the link if you want to just poke around. Here's an article published by my friend Alan Tepper. This is a review of the Fairphone 4 with the EOS privacy operating system. So this is actually a phone that's running, it's a different phone running a different operating system than your standard Apple iPhone or your Android phone. This is different. It, the hardware is different and the operating system is different and it's all built around privacy. And um, it's very, very interesting. You know, a lot of people are always thinking like, you know, I wish I didn't have to 
use Android or, or Apple iOS. I wish there was a private one. You know, why do I only have two choices? Why can't I use one that's private and stuff? So this, this is one uh, option. Um, and he, Alan goes through, it's a very lengthy review with all kinds of stuff. He goes through so many aspects of it. Really, it's good. So I'll link to it in the show notes. And just for some fun, Joe Martin, he got some orange pill picks made up for Bitcoin Atlantis. Yeah, and picks meaning guitar picks. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Let it be. I love this. Let it be. And the B is the Bitcoin B. Yeah, and so he's going to be giving these out at Bitcoin Atlantis, which is happening, I think, in about a week. I wish I could go. Bitcoin is the new rock and roll. Yes, it is. Bitcoin, it really is. And this one, just for fun, if the person who named Walkie Talkies named everything. So for stamps, it should be called the Licky Sticky. Defibrillators should be called the Hardy Starty. Bumblebees should be called Fuzzy Buzzy. <laughs> Pregnancy test, maybe baby. <laughs> a bra should be called the Breasty Nesty. A fork should be called a Stabby Grabby. Socks, feety heedy. Hippo should be called a floaty bloaty and a nightmare, a screamy dreamy. Okay, anyway, just wanted to end on some fun. This is our website, fractalbitcoin.com. See this link on top? Click it. Join our locals community. Come over here and join our locals and say hi in the chat. It's free. And don't forget the Bitcoin panel. We have every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And tomorrow we're going to have it. So definitely put that on your calendars and subscribe to the channel, and like the video and all that. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you, and I appreciate all your feedback, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.